exactly 384 amateur fights between the ages of four and 19. His only professional loss was in a fight in Japan uh, after a butt and a head cut on a technicality. His defeat of Johnny Tapia twice has sent him into a different classification as a fighter. Ring Magazine Fighter of the Year in 1999. And now let's go up to ring announcer Michael Buffer for the official introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, from the Mandalay Bay Resort and Casino of Las Vegas, Bob Arum's Top Rank Incorporated is proud to present 12 rounds of boxing for the vacant IBO Super Bantamweight Championship of the World. Brought to you in association with your undisputed king of beer, Budweiser, and sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission, Chairman Dr. Elias Ghanem. The three judges assigned to ringside scoring this bout on the 10-point system will be Dwayne Ford, Dave Moretti, and Jerry Roth. And when the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action working for the 142nd time in a world title bout, Joe Cortez. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for the thousands in attendance here at the Mandalay Bay of Las Vegas and the millions watching around the world, uh, let's get her ready to rumble! <laughs> Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing gold, trimmed with white, and weighing in at 122 pounds. His professional record, an outstanding one, consisting of 32 victories, including 12 knockouts with only one loss and two world title belts. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the pride of Fort Worth, Texas, the two-time world champion, Holly Ayala. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black, trimmed with blue and white, and also weighing in at 122 pounds. His professional record also outstanding. As he's undefeated for the past seven years, he has 41 victories, including 19 knockouts, with three defeats and three bouts even. Now training and fighting here in Las Vegas, he comes to us from Henderson, Kentucky. Ladies and gentlemen, the former WBA Super Bantamweight Champion of the World, Clarence. Adams. All right, Paulie. All right, gentlemen. We went over the rules in the dressing room. I expect a good, clean fight. Obey my commands at all times. Paulie, these trunks here are a little high. Yep. Punches here are still good. Your trunks are okay. Obey my commands at all times. Remember, guys, I'm fair, but I'm firm. Touch them up. As friendly as they have been up until this moment, because they are each earning their biggest purses, $500,000. The bucks stop here. The fighting starts for the winner. There are more big purses ahead. And Larry, there's an adage in the gambling world, late money, smart money. I just got a note from the sports book that there was a rush of late money on Pauli Ayala this afternoon. Ayala, who was the underdog for much of the week, is as the result of a rush of late betting, a fairly solid favorite over Bones Adams going into the ring tonight. Now, I would attribute that to the fact that many of his fans from Texas have arrived in the last and the day or so. Texas boys do believe in betting. <laughs> they, they believe in you, they will put the money up. So Paulie Ayala, as you see, sets up as a southpaw. Bones Adams in the conventional stance. Oh, yeah. And Bones Adams told Emmanuel Stewart that he would want to be the aggressor and punch in this fight. As opposed right, to right, sitting right, back right. and waiting to counter Paulie, right, which Let's might go. normally be the stop. They bump heads once. Joe Cortez will be looking for head bumps as the fight continues.
Bones Adams said to us yesterday, Emmanuel, I regard myself as the bigger man with the bigger punch in this fight. You know what? And he's fighting that way, too. He's, he's not fighting his normal slow counterpunching showboating style of fighting. He's, he is actually establishing himself as the puncher tonight. I think the fight has the makers of being a very exciting, explosive fight. Adam standing in on flat feet, trying to land big shots here in round one. Ayala stepping in, firing combinations, and then moving back up. Ayala is not the puncher that, that you know, bones it, so that part's going to be interesting that he's going to come in and stand toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Well, Paulie loves to fight. No, you know, he as he loves, showed in the Tapia fight. fights, he will engage. Well, I think he's going to fight a lot more aggressive than maybe he even possibly did in the fight with Tapia. First of all, Bones is not as flashy and as fast as Tapia. Tapia was. Tapia was much faster and fought with a lot more intensity and speed. But Bones is fighting a lot slower. Bones with a thudding right to the body. Well, he's, he's going to be a puncher tonight. Crunching left hand under yes. the chin by Ayala. Oh, this has to make us up being a good, good fight. A trade shots in the corner. Holy Ayala going to the body with both the left and the right hand. And now he bangs Adams back with a left hand upstairs. I think the speed is going to be a big factor. Ayala is a little bit faster. And everything else being equal. And then he's had a lot of experience in these type fights, too. Maybe the Texas money looks good. You got the chest, okay? You already got his eye almost close, okay? So keep using that jab, but I want to see two and three jabs, okay? Not just one jab, okay? That's your main weapon. Your hook is hitting it. Shorten it all up a little bit. Don't try to go so wide, okay? Late in the round, Ayala came on. Might have stolen the round on the basis of his rally in the last minute. I, I'd like to point out also that Ayala has the same corner that's working with him that has been with him throughout his entire career, even as a little kid. Whereas so amateur I, professional right on through, these are the same people have always been there. Same people, the same people with Don Curry. He's got some real good experienced people in this corner, and I'm quite sure he's very comfortable. In Bones' case, he's usually changing up a lot. And it's not the same people that he's had probably for the last few fights, possibly. Well, you heard Paulie Ayala's trainer, Henry Mendez, telling him, you've already swollen the left eye of Bones Adams. Keep firing that right jab, and I want to see more of it. And indeed, they were working on Adams' left eye with ice in the corner between rounds. Being that Bones is fighting a guy who doesn't get knocked out, so to say, and has a good solid chin, he needs to get busier, start looking forward to trying to win a decision. Because if he's just going to gamble on scoring a knockout, he's going to find himself in big trouble going down the stretch in this fight. Aggressive fighter pay, so you can't slow him down enough to take care of him. Stop, stop, stop. Adam sneaked in a right uppercut. Was lucky to stay up. 
But that's being a fighter. But the way it's going is that's going to be a matter of time before that same punch lands again. And he just landed it twice more. Once under the chin and once on the top of the head. And again. His head is straight up. His head is straight up. Holy Allen just oh, ripping oh, Bones oh, oh, Adams with left oh, hand oh, oh, oh. shots. And you can see the difference in the physical size, but the fact that Adams is keeping his head in one position. Now Bones gets Pauly back with the right hand and momentarily stops his progress. Adams is head clearing and he fires counter shots. The problem is he's going to get hit with that same punch again, though. He's not being hit because Agali is a puncher. <laughs> Survives. And what's he gonna do to stop Paul Ayala's oh, left, left hand? Step around it. Hey, you got to keep boxing. Right back in the shot off, step around it. Right hand, left hand, left hook, step around. Bring the shot off, you put up his hand in the middle of it. Make okay. him move his feet. Okay. Make him move his feet. Work on that eye. You hear me, sir? Make him move his feet. Run your combination, make him move his feet, man. Remember, if you hit him to the, with, a, with a straight left to the head, he's going to hurt now because he's hurting. So start thinking up, okay? If you throw one straight, bring the other hand up. The left hand really hurts Adams. And perhaps that's because Adams is not accustomed to being an aggressor, trying to be a puncher. As uh, Jim, you, you mentioned before the fight, when a fighter gets into a big fight and he changes his style, it ain't necessarily a good thing. No, well, it's usually a storm cloud, and it has been so far for Adams here tonight. Now, Manny, what does Adams do to try to slow down the momentum of Pauly Isle's left-hand well, attack? He needs to start boxing and trying to move around a little bit more and moving his upper body, because he's, even when he's punching, he's leaving his head straight up a lot. He's going to have to start moving his upper body a lot more because the fight is still very close in terms of the talent. And he still has that advantage of being physically a little bit stronger. But from what I can see, going down the stretch, I think Paul is going to be turning it on. It's going to be more his fight as his fight goes down the last few rounds, if it goes that way. So far, Paulie's quickness and aggression have been enough to carry the day. And he's seen experience in these type fights, too. I mean, you don't get much tougher than Johnny Tapia. Well, probably one thing Paulie Ayala has learned from big fights is don't change your style if you're going against a good opponent under the spotlight. Yes, he's fighting the same style that he always fights for Bones is intend to set back and be a big puncher. There's some big shots for Adam. Good shots. Bones is winning this round. Into the body by Adams. And again. And the uppercut scores. And this is a big round for Bones. Now Ayala scores with a big right hand of his own. able to stick his right this hand straight up really the middle. Interesting. After losing the last round, no, the probably is very big. He's come back and won the very next round. Oh, kind of no, fight you like no, to no, see. No, this is what you call a good fight. <laughs> this is a good fight. Compy box numbers were basically even coming into this round. Bones Adams has been able to do here in this stanza the kinds of things he wanted to do. He's done a lot more body punching. Whether or not that will count over the long term remains to be seen. But it's certainly counting here. Standing here, and you can see physically he is much stronger, too. Absolutely. He's imposing his strength on Ayala in a way in which he couldn't do when Ayala was the aggressor, knocking him back with left hands. Don't miss this summer's new series. The bombshell that exploded the in the NFL this past week. Okay? 
by you making a move, see, he's used to wanna, he wants to stay there and just counter. We're not going to let him do that because you're too good of a shape, okay? You've been working. I'm telling you the right thing. Come on, son. Come on. So give your hand speed, man. Let's do this back to the home. Watching this, Jim, I'm reminded of the safari I went on in Africa after the Lewis Rockmont fight. One of the more astonishing things I saw was two cobras trying to devour each other. That's what we have here. Harold, which cobra is devouring the other? <laughs> okay, Jim, two rounds to one. 29-28, Corley Ayala. Oh, another big left hand. Go ahead, Harold. Okay, Jim, I thought Corley Ayala clearly won the first two rounds, but the third, Bones Adams won it with that body with that body attack. But I got to tell you, Bones is off it on Corley Ayala's lead right foot. Steps on it constantly. Well, he better step on it some more because when Ayala's lead right foot is free, he's banging Bones with the left hand, which he's been able to do early in this round. Bones coming back with some straight counter shots, just as he did in the last round. Power shots in round three by CompuBox numbers. Adams landed 22 out of 36 for 60%. That's what happens when you go to the body. You land your shots. He, he landed some very good body punches. I thought he won a round. He did uh, very well, but I don't know if he's still going to be the avoid getting caught with that short left hand. It's, Both the as, 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 as Ayala gets close to him, he, he's leaving his head straight up. But if he keeps punching to the body, Ayala is almost afraid to let his punches go because he may get hit with a clean body punch. So there's danger for both Paulie Ayala and Bones Adams as the tactical matchup unravels. Both of Adams' that, cheekbones that, that, are badly that, bruised. That type of a change, anyone can go down when they're exchanging punches like that. Larry, you were saying? Well, that Adams' is both cheekbones are badly bruised, yep. but, but he is landing some really good body shots. I don't know how much Ayala can take. Without my, my, guess, my, my guess is Ayala is going to outlast him if it continues to go this way because he's been in more fights of this type. Well, what are you holding, guys? Come on, get him out. Come on, get him out of there. They are testing each other. Heart and will. You know, this is a, a beautiful contrast to the heavyweight fight we just saw. Big guys fight a different fight play a different game almost you, you than guys? these guys. Yeah, and both of these guys are known for having good fights too. Ayala particular. Well, these guys accept that there's going to be contact. You're going to hit and you're going to get hit. That's what they're both in there for. Well, and neither one of them is a big bomber. Oh, did they trade some body shots there? Holly Ayala with a particularly vicious shot to the ribcage of Bones Adams, and Bones comes back with a crunching up. Oh, up okay. Regardless of the outcome of this fight, both of these guys have won up in terms of credibility with the public. Oh, this is a war. I want to, to step did. around him on them drops, man. Bam, bam, get around him. Okay, boys, get the shot off. Get around. I want you to be aware of this. The guy has got no gas already. He's desperate. He's beat up. So you know what he's doing now to you? He's trying to throw that lead upper. He's depending on that upper. So be alert yeah, be and alert, watch buddy. that upper because he's throwing that, okay? And another thing, remember, we're working on twos and threes, not, no, not just one shot, okay? So when you throw your jab and you're going to come left, or either give me two jabs, okay? Get past him, or step around him. Okay. Right hand fence, okay? Box is still, daughter. Won't you out there fighting with him, baby? Hands up. Power shots in round four. According to copy box numbers, Adams landed 17, Ayala 16. Little to choose between the two in the fourth round. Tough round to score. They threw an equal number of punches and landed an equal number. Adams still punches with more authority, I think, than Ayala. It's just the idea of he gets caught with punches that he don't see because he gets preoccupied with punching. And that's been the big difference. So even the punches that maybe Ayala may land, which would be power punches, and they're really power punches, are just the effective punches. The closest we came to a knockdown was when Ayala corked Adams with a hard left in the second round. And Adams was momentarily out on his feet. 
but he found his balance holding on to Ayala and managed to survive the round and then came back to win the third round with spirited body punching. And there's that uppercut that Bones Adams wants to throw and which Henry Mendez told Paulie Ayala to look out for. Bones is being very effective with that right uppercut too. Landed it right on yep. the chin of Ayala while Ayala was pounding away to the body. Bones' straight right hand has been affected from time to time. But Larry's right. Both eyes are showing the damage as you look at Clarence Bones Adams from this angle. You can see it. fight but it seems to be much more power and more explosive punching power in this fight than when they, they fought well of course we're we're four pounds farther north at 122 which may not sound to the general public as though it means a lot but in boxing every little incremental step in weight means bigger punches yeah, but oh, yeah. they did fight it at 122 or a little higher i believe in their rematch but let's remember, uh, as good as Donnie Tapia was five years ago, he's much past his prime now. He's 33 years old. He's had a lot of good, tough fights, and he's on the downslope. Both of these guys look like they're right. These guys are not at their peak physically. At their peak, a combination of physically and an experience. Oh, Ayala getting away with three low blows. Oh, look out, look out. Come on, guys. Right, well, so it appeared from here. Yeah, yeah they're on the belt line. And, uh, and the blood is coming from um, Ayala's mouth the first time he's been marked. Probably because of those uppercuts. <laughs> and maybe straight right hands. Thrown with vicious intentions. Well, I say this much. Bones out of his fighting exactly as he said he would fight. As a power puncher. That's the way to go, man. That's the way to go. That's the way to go. Sixth round, okay. okay, Paul. Okay, babe. Here we go. You're doing everything beautiful, okay? You're counting. All he's throwing you at you now. Here, real, okay? real death. Fast and sharp with the shots, okay? Fast and sharp and get around it. Don't stand in front of me. Uh -huh. Make a meet, make a meet, make a meet. Don't we the It's a back and forth fight, an up and down fight, up and down in the sense both fighters going to the body, going to the head, putting all of their experience, all of their talent to their big test. This is what it's about. On five, another difficult round to score. CompuBox numbers, Adams 23 out of 79. Ayala 19 out of 76. Little to choose from there. I gave that last round to Adams. I have Ayala ahead three rounds to two. But I would say this much, if the fight continues as it is and Bones Adams doesn't run out of gas, he stands a good chance of possibly pulling an upset in this fight because he's still punching with more authority. And he just cracked Ayala with a clean right hand, oh. and Ayala just kept coming. Yes. Now there was an occasion when Adams landed four or five punches right. and just Ayala came back with one. Ayala is, uh, Ayala is making him punch more. He's actually moving in, coming up, and making Bones do most of the work. And then he's coming right back at the tail end of the combinations.
Two good friends, known each other a long time, high degree of respect leading into the fight. At the end of the pre-fight news conference, they embraced each other in front of media, made a point of saying, we don't need any of the nonsense antagonism to boost this fight. We like each other, we'll still like each other after the fight. They are fighting like trained professionals right now. Ayala is used to these type fights. Now, I'm not used to seeing Bones out of these type fights where his volume of punches has to be as high as it is. And as a result, he's fighting a guy with a good chin. He don't knock him out. I think this pace is going to take his effect on Bones more going down the stretch, even though he's a better puncher. Well, you may be right, Emmanuel, but right now, unless something happens in the last half minute, we've got about an even fight. Well, actually, to some degree, Bones may be winning the fight. I'm just looking down the stretch. But if he can hold up and maintain... I think it's impossible to know who's winning the fight. You'd have to see the next six rounds. Further mysteries are going to unfold. You've already seen a counterpart from a puncher. Not all that ineffectively, either. Whack and crack. Both fighters have had their moments through the first six rounds, and Emmanuel Stewart is standing and applauding for a professional effort by two terrific fighters. Better work, better work. Pretty, pretty, pretty. Run the shot, pretty. Step around him. We work on back paddling now. Back paddling now. Don't pull out there, okay? You keep yourself low and back paddle with some of these ropes, huh? okay? Everything will go right over your back. <laughs> okay? He don't have no legs anymore, sir. And he's throwing those punches. He's throwing them real slow. Can you counter him? You did a beautiful counter right over here. He, he threw a shot at you, and you hit him with three more back. And that's what I'm needing from you, okay? What? I hit you. You hit me. The crowd roars. Let's do it again. All right, seconds out. Halfway through. Work work order. A scheduled 12 rounds. Harold, how do you have it through six? Okay, Jim. Three rounds apiece. 57-57. Jim, I gotta tell you, the last two rounds, I thought Bones Adams just won. I, I'm usually kind of judged that he'll score every time for the effective aggressor. Certainly, Paulie Ayala is the effective aggressor, but Bones Adams is the harder puncher, and he's just too often near Ayala as Ayala comes in. One of the big questions in this fight is, in round two, Paulie Ayala hurt Bones Adams seriously, and it certainly could have been a 10 8 round. I called it 10 9 because Bones punched back. But I wouldn't argue with a judge that gave Ayala 10-8 in round two. So 57-57, all even. Look at him, look at I think Joe Cortez is doing a good job because even though it appears like maybe Adams is landing low blows because of the cut being so high in the band, he has not caught any low blows. He's let him fight. He hasn't interfered with anything, and that comes from experience. Well, and, and you got a southpaw against a conventional fighter. They haven't been tangled up all that much. There's only been one serious brush of the heads, and that didn't result in any damage. So, so far, a very clean fight in circumstances that don't always dictate that. Very clean fight, very exciting fight. All of a sudden, Adams is moving forward. Big left hand inside by Ayala. And, and Ayala's getting cracked. Some stiff punches as he walks in. Oh, keep punches up. Keep him up, you understand? Keep him up. First warning for low blows. Had to be coming sooner or later. Both fighters have wandered south a little, but Ayala has done so far more than has Bones Adams. Great right hand again, right through the middle of the guard. You can really see the difference in the strength and the weight at this stage. Ayala is still a bantamweight. weight. And still, Ayala has to stalk the bigger man. That's his style. He's, he's not punching with the power, but he's busy enough to make it very interesting. Shot to the body by Adams. 
The tide seems to be swinging toward Adams. Bigger man, bigger punch. Ole Ayala trying to respond to his corner's request for more counters. Let Bones lead and counter him. Bones is leading hard. Bones is leading well. Like you fight, you can speed. Don't wait so long sometimes, okay? Don't give me no time to him. Okay. You're giving too much back. That's right. Come on, baby. Come on. Let's go ahead and get this now, man. It's in our hands to get it. Hand speed. You slowed down tremendously, man. I'd rather you bring that hook to the head and to the body, okay? Okay, we just get up under. Don't pull back. Everything gonna go over. You're tired now. Keeping you know? it this time, okay? Don't loop it, please. And another thing he's doing to you, remember on those tapes that we studied? How he's throwing that overhand right, so be aware of that, okay? He squat when he squats down, you know that the overhand right is coming, okay? We already worked on that. So as soon as he Ayala was warned for a low blow. A point taken away for a foul could be decisive in this kind of fight. Sure good. Yes, it could. Be. Well said. Punches in round seven for the first time. Ayala's punch count begins to drop. He was down to 58 in that round. Bones threw 73. Bones landing twice as many. 20 to 11 for Ayala. And you see on Harold Letterman's guard, Adams wins the round and goes ahead for the first time in the fight. I believe that Bones Adams is punching with so much power and authority that Ayala hasn't experienced that in the past. And as a result, he seemingly is keeping his hands so close, really trying to protect himself. And as a result, he's nowhere near as busy as he's been in most of his fights in terms of his output. He's really trying to keep his hands close to keep from getting caught with those body shots that he's been getting. And that, in turn, gives Adams more chances to pick his shots. Oh, yeah. yes, and it. Yeah, and, and you heard Ayala's corner tell him, look to counter. Well, that's not his game any more than we thought Adams' game was to lead. Adams is doing exactly as he said he would do. He's become a power puncher tonight and taking advantage of his weight advantage that he has and seemingly slowed down Polly Island. Ayala's crowd from Fort Worth, Texas, chanting Polly, Polly, Polly. Sharp right hand over the top by Ayala. Adams fighting with closing eyes, but fighting resolutely and by far the more effective over the course of the last couple of rounds. Now in the eighth round, it is Adams who seems to begin to slow down a little bit, and Ayala picks up the pace. But, he, but Adams is still punching with a lot of power still. from that left hook. Now, Bones Adams is blocking most of those shots inside. But his output has gone down in this round. trainer whose voice we're listening to in Bones Adams' corner is a guy named Keith Jackson. I haven't seen him before. Doing a nice job with Bones tonight. Yeah, he and Miguel Diaz okay. both are working together. Come on, this is your show now. Let's go Miguel Diaz is one of the better tournament in the entire sport. 
Very, very good Keep man. Keep working that Go. jab like you're working it. He's pushing Paulie down a lot. Yeah, okay. I think this is a new experience for Ayala also. I don't think okay. he's ever been Thank in with this type of punching power. Real good, experience. Man. Look, don't stop him. Okay. And remember, this and Paul Reyes we worked on all those have been talking to Paulie Ayala for close to 20 years. And they've got a lot of talking to do with him tonight. We go to the ninth of a scheduled 12. Good pitched battle between Bones Adams in the black trunks with blue trim and Paulie Ayala in the gold. Everybody expected an evenly matched fight, which would go rounds, maybe go the distance. That's what we've had. You saw that Adams backhanded Ayala. He acknowledged it. And the referee warned him about it. So you've had one warning to Ayala for low blows, one warning to Adams for backhanding. What could be crucial is what Carl spoke of earlier is what happened, I think, in that second round when Alice was hurt very seriously. Whether they called that a 10 8 round can be very crucial as this fight. What do you goes think about that, stage. Manny? Do you think a 10 8 round without a knockdown should have proceeded from that particular uh, situation? Seems to me he only hurt him with the no, one punch. No, I don't think it. it was mainly a punch that he didn't see, he wasn't expecting it, and he held on. No, no, I, I didn't think it was a two point round. No, I don't I think it should be a two point. It wasn't as though he completely dominated the entire, the entire round, round which right. is what you generally have to do if you don't get a knockdown. And I'll be very honest, at this point in time, Bones is probably maybe winning the fight. Well, he's winning the fight on Harold Letterman's card. Yes. He's probably winning it on Larry Merchant's card, and he seems to be emerging in the eyes of the ringside crowd. Yes, he is. But both eyes are swelling, and Paulie Ayala continues to pot shot accurately from time to time. Ayala doing more moving and more countering as the fight goes on. No question, Bones Adams' superior punching power has backed Ayala off in this fight. Yes, he is. Only not nearly as aggressive as he was in the first two rounds. I think that's respect for that strength that he's showing. And Bones is doing a pretty good job defensively, too. He's made great adjustments compared to what I expected after the first round when he had his head straight up. Now he's going into his little Pernell Whitaker bob and weave motion a lot. Ayala tries to go to the body. Adams takes a shot upstairs. at some no, body work by Bones. If we see Ayala backing off now, it may be because of all of these body punches during the fight. This has been a beautiful display by Adams, whatever the outcome of boxing, punching, up and down, in and out, combinations, uh, counters, and Body work by Bones. There's a group of people, they tell me, at Pebble Isle and a marina down in Tennessee that's cheering for Bones, so they're all out on the boat. So I'm quite sure all of those people on the 
Pebble Island Marina enjoying this fight. Are they, are they all over 15? Uh, <laughs> Harold, Harold uh, how do you have it scored through oh, nine? Okay, Jim. 87, 84, six rounds to three. Clarence Bones Adams. I got to tell you, I got to move on the last five rounds. Without question, this guy's landing to clean the hardest shots. The key word when you're scoring a fight for an aggressor is effective aggressiveness. Paulie Ayala takes it to Bones Adams. Half the time he misses. A lot of times he only lands light shots. It's not effective aggressiveness. It's ineffective aggressiveness. Bones Adams counter punch him hard to the body, winning the fight with the cleanest shots. I have the score of 5 4 for Adams. When you look at the 118, 122 pound, 126 pound weight classes, there is a massive concentration of talent. From the bottom up, fighters like Tim Austin, Mark Two Sharp Johnson, Johnny Tapia still, Manny Pacquiao, the new sensation out of the Philippines, Marco Antonio Barrera, Eric Morales, Prince Nassim Ahmed. A lot of big names, potentially a lot of big money for the winner of this fight. The way this fight is going, Jim, uh, both of them are going to be in demand. Yeah, this, this has a little bit of the Morales Barrera about it, doesn't it? Yep. Not quite as sustained. You know, you can't say that nobody is, is uh, that they're both winners. One is a bigger winner than the other, put it that way. As a fight fan myself, I'm very impressed with the performance tonight. Not only are they throwing a lot of punches, but so many power punches. I mean, they're fighting as if they were heavyweights. Well, if they were heavyweights, this fight would have been... Oh, oh hand by Allen. Look at this way. Stopped Bones in his tracks, but he not enough the, power. Then Bones come back. Bones crunching him inside with the left hand. Ayala landed a haymaker in perfect range on balance, but Bones Adams more or less walked through it. What I like is when Bone is starting to go underneath now when he finishes up his punches instead of pulling straight back. And that's been a big difference in this right there. It's been a big difference in him getting caught with that left hand with his head up in there. Yeah, and now in the 10th round, all of a sudden, Adams shoots out four straight jabs and lands three of them. Ooh, left hook. Right. Just off the point of the chin. Yeah, after he shot four jabs and then two more. Bang, he comes back with the left hook. I mean, this is just wonderful textbook stuff by both fighters. Oh, yes. And I have to give a referee credit because Joe Cortez has let it be a good fight, too. That's the way to go. Go run, Man, that distance, Polly. When he's chew, uh, throwing at you and you're moving back a little step, it's beautiful, goals. son. Okay? Box Keep it. Yeah, box him. Box the heck out of it. Just use your speed. Just don't stop throwing shots, okay? Remember, your hands have got to be up, okay? Because this guy is desperate. He's trying to throw a crazy wild shot on you, okay? We're not going to let that go through there, okay? Come on. You're killing me. It's all right. You're going to be all right. You a champ, man, okay? Come on, baby. You the you the worst conditions in this. Deep round. Come on. Two last round. Two round, baby. Okay. You got to throw everything. Hands. Throw and weave. Throw and weave. Don't be nice, on, pencil. Don't. Don't. Keep the shoulder turned, man. Don't square off and put it out like that. Okay, you're getting cracked, man. Don't do it, okay? Yeah. Right, Defense got to be tight. We're going into the championship rounds, and you may have heard Bones Adams tell his corner, my hands are killing me. He has had a broken hand before. And tell us about that, Manny. I mean, obviously, he committed to punching tonight as his game plan. He's thrown every punch with the hardest of intentions. That's the price you pay for that kind of punching, right? Yes, you know, when you land punches like he's been throwing, either on the forehead or the elbows, that really hurts the hand. And he's landed a lot of punches directly on the elbows when he was throwing his body shots. But I give him credit. He's still in there fighting. His connect percentage dwindled in the last round. He landed only eight punches in that round. Interesting that Ayala's very experienced corner seems to be trying to give him the impression he's winning the fight. And now their heads come together, and Bones Adams has a broken. Nope, he has a cut above the eye. Yep. Just above the left eye, big cut. Nasty, nasty gash in his eye. Uh, Ring doctor will take a look. If this fight were to have to stop now, who knows? Yeah, well, I just thought, 
you see now? I can see now. Let it, let it go. Huh? Let, let it go. go. As long as he can see. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Accidental haircut. So the fight continues as Adams says that he can see. Uh, Not taking a page from the Hector Camacho Jr. book at uh, Coney Island a few weeks ago where the answer would have been no, I can't see. Well, I, th I think a bigger problem is possibly the, the pain that he's experiencing with his hands, more so than the eye. Well, maybe the blood will take his mind off the eye. It's somehow dramatically correct that we should have blood in this fight because blood is drama. This is a wonderful fight between two really good fighters giving us serious drama. Harold Letterman, Harold, what would have happened if Bones had said, no, I can't see? Jim, it would have gone to the scorecards because we're beyond the fourth round and it's an accidental head fight. If that cut gets made worse by clean legal punches and the fight gets stopped before the end of the 12th round, we go to the scorecards to determine the winner since the cut was originally caused by a head fight. Look at Bones Adams busting the straight right hand and the left hook up the middle despite the flow of blood from a huge gash above his left eye. Gutty performance by Bones now. You know, there have been a number of occasions when I've gone home after a fight and found spots of blood on a shirt or a jacket, as all of us have. I'd be proud to have some of this blood on me tonight. Badge of honor. Emmanuel Stewart, if you were Bones Adams' trainer, how would you feel about going to the scorecards after this round? Well, it depends on the fighter himself, how he feels. In my case here, yeah, I may not hesitate to go to the scorecards after this. Considering his hands are hurt so bad and he's got a bad cut, he's got a really serious handicap going into this last round of such a crucial fight. There's the butt. That's what brought about the cut. There had been a number of collisions during the fight, grazing collisions. That was not grazing. <laughs> bring the wall, bring the wall. Don't throw it away. Come on, put it in there. Come on. Okay, this is the last round, guys. <laughs> last round. Last round. Deep round. Deep round. Deep round. Last round. Okay? The last round, okay? Look, the same way you just fought that round, baby. Okay? Swell. <coughs> Don't give up nothing. This is your one. Miguel Diaz, outstanding cut man, trying to do his work on Bones Adams. Joe Cortez brings him together at the center of the ring. In round 11, despite the blood flow, Adams still outlanded Ayala by CompuBox numbers 15 out of 57 to 10 of 64. So it's conceivable that he won the round anyway. I have this fight six to five for Adam. It could easily be the other way. As long as Ayala doesn't land anything above Adams' left eye, Bones will be okay. At least as far as his vision is concerned. But the instant Ayala lands a punch up there, everything will change. Well, at this stage here, I, I, I'm really surprised how Ayala, the last, Ayala, the last two rounds have really become more of a laid-back, conservative fighter. And I think that's a result of this tremendous punching power that he's feeling and experiencing tonight. Bones' his game bone, plan bone, has worked. Bones is fighting a good fight. He's, he's fighting exactly as he said he would fight. And he said the extra weight that he is a true 122-pounder. And it's amazing what four difference of natural strength and weight can do. Bigger man, bigger punch. That's been the difference in the fight, at least to our eyes. Now they trade shots at the center of the ring, and for the first time, Adam starts to bleed. For the first time in the 12th. 
We'll let the record state that halfway through the round, the blood started to flow. Big left hook upstairs by Adams. And another. Hawley countering with his own left hand. Maybe the almost 400 amateur fights, the hard fights he's had with Tapia and all of them has taken an effect also, too. You know, it's just so many fights you have left in your body. Oh, and look at the bravery of Bones Adams going after it in the 12th round. Monster gas above the left eye of Adams, and still he keeps coming. Folks, if you're still up watching this, it's okay <laughs> to stand up and applause even if you're alone. Oh. Go. Look at the fans on their feet. Another tribute to a supposedly dying sport. 15 seconds to go in what has been a good one. And Ayala chooses for the most part to stay away in the 12th round, even while Adams is compromised by the gas above his eye. A great fight. I have Adams winning. Perhaps it would be poetic justice for a draw, but we seldom get poetry or justice in this game. <laughs> yeah, too. Provided they didn't call sell them. them, that's for sure. I think Adams won the last two rounds anyway, despite the gas. Harold, how did you score it? Well, I thought Adams at least won the last round, clearly. 115, 113, seven rounds to five. Clarence Bones Adams. I thought he was slowed up a little by the blood going into his eye, but I question. I thought Paulie did enough to win those uh, 10 and 11, but certainly Clarence Bones Adams pulled it out, sealed the victory with a big round to round 12. Absolutely no question. Clarence Bones Adams, the harder puncher, deserves this one. Three good, solid Nevada judges to score in this one. Dwayne Ford, they've already Jerry Roth, got a world of experience. There's no reason whatsoever that we should have any kind of controversies. Although Adams himself said that he wouldn't trust the scoring here enough to expect a decision in a close fight, Adams said to us in the fighter meeting that he believed he had to win big or by knockout to assure himself a victory here because he was scared that a close decision would go Ayala's way. He didn't win by a knockout, Pasha, but I think he won big enough. And you heard Harold Letterman say that these are top-notch Vegas judges with big-time credentials. Manny, you think Adams deserves victory in the fight? I think he deserves it, and I think he'll get it. I think uh, he's following the heels of those controversial decisions that he's had recently and other things that's been going on. I think there's a very good chance that they will give him the fight that I think that he won. Well, Michael Buffer's ready, so let's end the suspense and hear who won the fight. Ladies and gentlemen, we go to the Budweiser scorecards here at the Mandalay Bay Resort Casino of Las Vegas. Dwayne Ford scores the bout 114 to 113 for Bones Adams. Dave Moretti scores the bout 114 to 113 for Pauli Ayala. And Jerry Roth scores the bout 115 to 112 for the winner by split decision. Now the IBO champion, Pauli. box numbers will favor Adams landing 73 more punches throwing 55 more punches landing at a higher connect percentage power punches if they show it to us will favor Adams landing 193 54 more than Ayala 
and throwing 66 fewer so that his connect percentage was over 40 percent as opposed to 27 percent for Ayala. That's often the case when one man is punching to the body and therefore more accurately. It's also often the case that body punchers don't get full credit for what they do. Bones Adams was right when he said that if it was a close decision, it would go Ayala's way. That's what happened. Let's go to Larry Merchant for the further details. Thank you very much, Jim. Congratulations to both fighters. Uh, pa Paulie, were you in any way surprised by the decision? Um, I mean, I, I didn't know it was, it was that close of a fight, but uh, I mean, I'm not surprised. I mean, you know, Bones is a good fighter, and, and he put up a great fight. But, uh, I mean, I felt I had done enough to win. I mean, I didn't just know it was by the hair of my chinny-chin-chin. Chin. 